Good morning everybody, it's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. In the last episode, we made it through the Schwank Fortress and got a super secret mini boss taken care of. In this episode, we are headed to the underground of the Schwank Fortress in order to find the stone keys that will allow us to get to Hooktail's castle. At the end of the day, it's all just one big fetch quest. So, now we're exploring another underground. No, not every single chapter has a secret underground area. Yeah, the prologue had the underground city, and this one has the underground... Underground. Uh, multi-bounds! This is a new badge! It lets you jump on all foes in a row with perfect action commands. So, say that there are three enemies on the field, you just, uh, get to jump on each one of them once, but you get to jump on each one of them in just a single turn. It is actually pretty helpful, especially when you're up against, like, a bunch of Koopa Troopas. You can knock them all over in one single attack. But we don't have any free BP at the moment, so we can't use it! And what the heck is this thing? Should be very familiar to people who played the first Paper Mario game, or I guess Super Mario World, but I actually played this game before Super Mario World. It is... a Fuzzy! And of course, gonna switch to Gumbella and find out what they're all about. Show me what you're all about! That's not a song, as far as I'm aware. That's a Fuzzy! What a hyper little guy, huh? Cut back on the caffeine! Max HP is 3, attack is 1, and defense is 0. Those things suck up your HP and use it to replenish their own. Isn't that the worst? I mean, ew, doesn't that just sound totally gross? Anyway, guard against them by pressing A the moment they release you. The timing is pretty hard to master, so uh, practice up. These guys really suck. HP. <laughs> oh, I see what you're doing, Nintendo, trying to be all M-rated and stuff. Yeah, because saying that word really makes you M-rated, but whatever. So you could do a super guard against them, it's just very, very difficult to do, so I won't blame you for just using the regular guard on it. I typically do tend to just go for that one. But not today! Yeah! Ha ha ha! I could go ahead and beat them with a regular super guard like I've been doing this entire time. Or not. Okay, we'll try this again. We'll have Gumbella take out this one, and then the third one's just gonna stay behind a little bit longer, but that's okay. Maybe we'll finish him off with a good old uh, super guard. Let's see if we can do it. Just gotta wait for the master! See what I tell you, don't underestimate the master of super guarding. Six star points. Unfortunately, you cannot upgrade your part you members HP through leveling up, so Gumbella is gonna be a bit behind in that regard, so maybe it's not the best idea to have her out in front all the time. But whatever, I think she could hold her own with the power of super guards. So MG I actually cut out a fight for once in an episode. Keep on going through here. You could have gone to either the left or the right. They both lead to similar places, and we both have to we have to explore them both eventually. This place, however, has the sunstone. We could use it to evolve a sun current into a sun flora or something like that. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! So, MG secret boss fight against an enemy we've already seen before, but now there's four of them. Can't flee this fight. So this place is just fuzzy city up in here. Just gotta fight a bunch of them, and because it's sort of a boss fight, I'm not allowed to cut it out. How lame. Uh, I guess I could talk about what I've been doing lately. I'm recording this the day I finished recording my Let's Play of Undertale, which is incredibly weird to say because I for so long didn't think I'd be able to play that game because I just wanted to play for so stinking long, but I wanted to LP it, and at the time I couldn't record PC games because it was only on PC for so long. But then it got, came out on PS4, and I finally got it, and I just kept it in my drawer for so stinking long because I just didn't have the time to play it. And I finally did. Undertale was, like, it was originally going to be the last LP of year uh, 6 instead of Earthbound, but I didn't have time for it, and then I was going to, like, do Undertale and Earthbound. I was like, that ain't happening because I have no idea how long the game is, so would not have been a smart idea to do it that way. Basically, I'm just glad I waited, and I LP'd it the way that I wanted to, and it turned out okay in the end. And thank you for the pretty lucky badge uh, chiming in right there. Uh, keep on doing that attack. But yeah, the game is phenomenal. I'm not going to go on a big rave about it because I'm sure everyone knows how wonderful the game is. If you haven't played it, though, be sure to do that because it is amazing. And how convenient or ironic that I'm talking about Undertale in the episode that we go underground. Then again, I guess that's not too weird or convenient timing-wise because Mario is always going underground because of the warp pipes and stuff. I'm just trying to find rhyme and reason for everything, but it doesn't really make sense. Uh, what else doesn't make sense is that, like, Mario's got, like, all those clouds, like, puffing up smoke whenever he walks in. It's a cool little detail, but, like, it always has this Goombella, like, biting the dust every time, uh, when you're just walking around. It looks kind of funny. Now we got more fuzzies. Get that flower, even though we don't need it because I'm super stingy when using FP, aka I never use it. 
And over here on the other side is a Moonstone! Yeah, we're in the town of Petalburg and we get a Sunstone and a Moonstone. The Pokemon references just keep piling up. Oh, they got an interesting item. It's kind of funny that the Fuzzies of all things have it. They have a... I don't even know what it's called. It, it's just called an HP Sucker or a Mr. Batty? I don't even know, but... It sucks HP and then adds it to your own, basically. So it's basically a fuzzy item. Basically, basically, basically. Uh, that's kind of interesting stuff. Maybe they'll use it and we could see it in action, or they could just use the regular attack and it'll basically be the same thing. I don't know why I attacked like that, because now I got a super guard against four of them. And this is it. Oh, I was about to be like, as if that's even a challenge. Oh, balls. Okay, the king of super guards can sometimes fail, I suppose. Uh, couldn't get to the throne without walking through the monarchs, I suppose. That's the analogy that suits me. My god, really? I couldn't do any of them? And, oh, they're not back full HP, but just get rid of these first two. Get rid of him. It's something weird, like, I always saw Fuzzies as a Paper Mario enemy because I played this game before Super Mario World. But then again, like, no, did I? No, I played Super Mario World first, it's just that I didn't get to the point where I saw Fuzzies because I stunk at the game back then. Because if that was the case, that'd be- No, because I played- I'm so, I'm so confused about everything, I forgot, like, did I play Paper Mario Thousand Year Old before Super Mario World? I'm not entirely sure, but I know that I saw Fuzzies here first, above all else. And then when I saw them in the 2D Mario games, I was like, what? They appear in those games? I didn't know that. Uh, but yeah, all the other enemies, I know them from Mario Party 5, because I played that game first. That was my first Mario game, of course. Uh, there you go. Very, very good. It's always satisfying when you finish the battle with a Super Guard. And we're back up to tw or up to 61 star points already. Very easy level grinding. And there's nothing else for us here, so it's just a identical pathway. So we just walk on back now that we got the stone keys, and we can finally enter Hooktail's castle. This can't possibly go poorly in any way whatsoever. We are good to go and have no more worries for the rest of our days. Meork! Hey, you suspicious types! This is our place! I'm coming in here as world, world, world! So, you suckers, if you want a warm welcome to man, now I got a lunch on your head. I know lunch can be used as a verb, but okay, we got another mini boss fight against a golden fuzzy. I want to sell it on eBay. No. Goombella, let's see what these guys are all about. Do they suck our HP out and turn them into coins? That's a gold fuzzy. Whoa, those are super rare. I'm serious. Wow. Max HP is 10, attack is 1, and defense is 0. Oh, but hey, even though it's a fuzzy, it won't suck up your HP, which is nice. I have to wonder though, how does this thing hide? Look at it, it's so gaudy! So even though it's a fuzzy, it will not suck our HP, it just does regular damage. But it has 10 HP, so it becomes a difficult fight. Uh, it has a rock in the audience because it's too bored with me explaining. I see how it is. Get rid of him. Uh, I think this will be a good opportunity to use our power smash, just because we haven't done it in a while. Pew! 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 Perfect stylish, as always. Mew! Hey, ow! You jumps are tougher than you look! But I'm not through yet! Everyone, get him! Hello! Yeah, we got a bunch of stinking fuzzies we gotta fight now. Uh, you don't actually have to fight all of them. If you just defeat the golden fuzzy, then you win the fight, but... Uh, I don't think you can super guard these guys specifically, so... Just use a regular guard, and then you should be good. Okay, did that one correctly. But yeah, the Fuzzy Horde is not an actual enemy that you can tattle in the Tantalog. It's just, uh, oh, it's actually right in the name. Uh, they're just a group of Fuzzy that have 20 HP. Just to be absolutely safe, I'm just gonna tattle on them. Even though we have their HP here, I don't know, it just seems like they should have a Tantalog of some kind. Uh, it's a Fuzzy Horde, look at them all. What a mob scene, it's crazy! Max HP is 20, attack is 1, defense is 0. Fuzzies come at you at all, once they attack an order, says here not to freak out. It also says that if you use your good timing to defend, you won't take much damage. I'm thinking it might just be faster to whip the re the ringleader, though, you know? Yeah, if you defeat the gold fuzzy, then the fight will end. But I'm always one for a challenge, so we'll go ahead and try and defeat the fuzzy horde as well. I don't think the fuzzy horde actually has a entry in the tattle log, so if you don't want to go and fight, then you could uh, not do so. But something else that to keep in mind is that um, the min mini boss enemies, you don't actually need to tattle on them. Because the game, obviously, they expect you to not want to uh, whip out your uh, tutorial party member during the big epic boss fights because they can be pretty difficult, so you don't want to waste a turn switching your party members back and forth, even though Goombells are only party member uh, currently. But if you ever come across an enemy that only appears once, like the Golden Fuzzy, for example, which is our first real mini-boss, 
Uh, then you could go back to Professor Frankly's house and- <coughs> Oh god, <coughs> I'm dying for spoiling things, I guess. Um, you go back to Professor Frankly's house and if you remember, when he sent us an email, he uh, showed us a picture of himself next to a trash can and there was a little piece of paper in it. That piece of paper will be a piece of the tattle log that contains an enemy that you weren't able to tattle. Um, basically, if we didn't tell the gold fuzzy, there would be an entry for his tattle log in his trash can. So the game makes sure you could go ahead and get all the enemies without uh, too much of a hassle. Uh, because it'd be really unfortunate if you missed out on the bosses, but they keep you covered. So, if you're trying to get 100% in the catalog, is what I'm trying to say. Don't worry about the bosses, because the game got you covered in the trash can. Probably could have worded that a lot better, but I don't think I care, because I won the fight and got 20 star points for it. Mirror, you got me! And we just run over here and see that they run off screen. It looks really funny. Okay, they're gone. So, Mario and Gumbella are very low on HP, but we got out of here pretty good. We actually got an in coupon that we could carry on and stuff. <laughs> I don't know what the heck I'm trying to say. Like, I'm just all word jambled now, all of a sudden, for whatever reason. Because it's a Midnight Beyond episode, that's why, I suppose. Could use the heal block, but I'm going to try and tough it out until we get back to Petalburg. I'm also going to uh, fight some enemies off camera real quick to see if we could get one more level up on the way. And then we will uh, get a free heal in that regard as well, I suppose. So, I guess that's not... It's very redundant for me to be talking about getting a free heal at the inn, I suppose. I'm just gonna cut away now because nothing I'm saying makes sense and it's just going on and on with no real purpose. So, I'll just see you guys in just a moment. On the way back, we got a dizzy dial, which confuses enemies, so I guess hooray for free items. Ooh, I really wish you would drop that badge, but I don't think you will. And just as planned, on the way back to Petalburg, we got ourselves another level up! Woohoo! Level up! So we just got 5 HP last time, so now we're going to go up to 15 FP. I like to keep my HP and FP all evened up. Oh, sweet relief. We finally made it back to Petalburg. Hoorah. And absolutely nobody cares about what we did. So we're just going to get on out of here. No one's here to celebrate our triumphant return from the Schwank Fortress. We just got to get on out of here and head there ourselves with the stone keys now that we got them. Them! Um, excuse me. It's, it's Mario, right? Look, I, um, see, the thing is, I've been waiting here in the hope of getting to speak with you. I have to ask you something. Uh, you could say no, but I'm going to throw it out there. Um, see, I was wondering, would you... No, oh, please take me with you to fight Hotel. Please, I'm begging you. Sorry about that. See, my dad, he went off to battle Hooktail long ago, but he never came back. I miss him, of course. I miss him badly, but this isn't just about avenging my dad. Well, no, that's not true. Revenge is a part of it, I guess. A big part. But the truth is, I want to finish what Dad started. For his sake. For everyone's sake. I... Oh, man, this is embarrassing. See, everyone always says I'm a crybaby. A weakling. But if I can defeat Hooktail, well, I won't be those things. I'll be strong. Like my dad. I know it'll be dangerous. But I still want to go. Please, Mario. In the words of a very beloved song that I adore oh so much, there's always room for you if you want to be my friend. So, welcome aboard. For real? No kidding? Yes, thank you so much, you won't regret this. Koops has joined your party! I think this is the only time in the game where it says has joined instead of just joined. Or maybe it's been has joined this entire time and I just now realized it and I've been living a lie my entire life. Who knows? Koops' abilities, A primer, I still don't know what that means. Press X to shoot out his shell, use it to retrieve distant items and hit switches. So he's basically Cooper from Paper Mario, but he's a lot better as we will find out because he's not just a generic Koopa that doesn't speak as we progress through the game. If you hold X, you can hold his shell in one place after shooting it. Pew. 
After holding his shell in place, release X to fire the shell past Mario in attacks. You can even hold Koops' shell in place, move Mario, and then release the shell. This becomes very prominent in a lot of puzzles later, as we will soon see. So remember, hold X to shoot the shell out and hold it in one place. How could I ever forget? In battle, Koops can fight by your side, striking foes with his main move, the Shell Toss. He can also strike all groundbound enemies in one attack with his Power Shell. To swap your partner in the field, press Start slash Pause and go to the party menu. Okay, Mario. Let's get going. Koops! Oh, golly, um, hi, hi, Koopy, Koopy Koo. Did you overhear all that? Well, part of it, Koops. I thought I heard you say you were off to fight Hooktail. But you're joking, right? I mean, you're not exactly a powerhouse. He'll eat you up. I know, Koopy Koo, but I want to be tougher for you. So I have to do this. No, Koops, you don't. I mean, going off to some dangerous place, it's... It's stupid. So what if you're timid and sort of a crybaby? I don't care about all that. I just want you to be you, so don't go. Sorry, Koopy Koo. I've made up my mind. No need to worry, though. After all, I'm traveling with Mario. He's the man. Fine! Ignore me! Stubborn Koopa! Mamma mia! I'm sorry, Koopy Koo. I swear to you, I'll come back to you a stronger Koopa. Oh, Mario? That's that, I guess. No turning back. Hooktail's castle awaits. We finally got ourselves a new party member, Koops. Now, in the reverse Paper Mario game, this is gonna become a running trend, as if it hasn't become a running trend already. You can just press the C stick to pull up a menu that would switch out your party members, but in this game you have to go to the pause menu to do it. Very minor, but might as well just tell you about it. But yes, we finally got ourselves a new party member. Not that I dislike Goombella, I very much like her personality, but uh, you can see that Koops is also very different from Cooper. He's not just- I feel like Cooper just had a very generic personality as well, but he has a m bit more of a backstory. He has like actual importance to this chapter. It's not just we found him along the way and I guess he'll join us. No, this actually- uh, this fight in particular holds importance to him as a character, which I really like. So what we're gonna do is attack the power Paragoomba, and we'll show off what Koops' action commands are like. We're gonna go ahead and use his shell toss. Uh, all you gotta do is hold down the left thing, and you let it release! It was a bit easier with Cooper because his shell toss was basically like Mario's hammer in that regard. Uh, as you can see though, he is just like regular Koopa in which he does have an extra point of defense. However, since the Goomba has- a, the Spike Goomba has an atta attack of 2, he was able to knock Koops over and also do damage in the process. So because of that, uh, Koops is immobilized. So we're just gonna get rid of him real quick. Pew, 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 pew. And what a great first victory, you have fallen your butt and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, he has a- I really like Koops' personality and I just like how the character is very diverse and they have actual identities aside from just uh, the initial meeting of them because in the first Paper Mario game after you met a character and they joined your party they never spoke again but in this game as you've plainly seen with Goombella they just keep on talking so we're just gonna do this real quick I should have also shown that Koops could uh, first strike enemies on the field which is actually really interesting if you use his shell toss on the field then it could initiate a battle which is really cool, and you can hold the shell in place to like line it up against an enemy. It's really cool and stuff. Now, you're supposed to wait for the green thing to uh, appear under the star, make it light up, but I've learned that you could just uh, do a quick light tap on the control stick to the left and it'll automatically do it uh, no problem. So just make sure you're quick with it and you should be good to go. Since Koops does have that extra point of defense, it would actually be a good idea to have him in the front of your party uh, from time to time. Uh, can I just kind of line this up? Let's see. Oh, jeez. Come on. Just wait for him to get back, and yeah! Get him on the rebound. Pew! 
and get two damage, and it's very quick, so he's very good to do first strikes with. Fortunately, since he is a Koopa, he cannot hit enemies in the air, so just knock that guy down to the ground, and we're good. Now, before I forget this crazy long warp pipe, there was another one, yes, there was one right here that... If you remember, when we were at the top of this thing, we saw ourselves this badge up here that we couldn't reach. Well, now with Koops, we could reach it. It is a Happy Heart Badge. We get one HP at the end of every turn when this, when this is equipped. Unfortunately, I don't have the space to equip it, so it's just going to be in my inventory for now. But it's good that we got it. Uh, just jump on this thing. I want to see if we can show off Koops' power shell, but we don't seem to be getting a lot of enemies in these fights. Because it was like the beginning of the game, so they don't want to overwhelm us too much. Even though we're backtracking. Uh, just go ahead and do the hammer. I guess for speedrunning's sake, Koops would be a bit quicker than Mario's Hammer if you're really concerned about that, but I'm not a speedrunner, so I don't really care. Plus, I have the power of editing magic on my side, so I can just edit out the fights and be any speedrun in that sense. I could just have episode 1 be the intro and then cut to the final boss if I wanted to. Then no one would be able to beat my record time! Mwahaha! Unless they just edit an even shorter video. You know what? I'll just upload a zero second video called Paper Mario Speedrun and then I'll be done and no one could ever defeat me. But whatever. As you can see here, we got all these stones around, and the ones that ever so conveniently have holes in them are shaped like the stone keys that we just got. So, let's put in the sunstone, and we'll put in the moonstone, and then we get a crystal star stone right now. That'd be kind of cool, but it's not that easy. We get magical inscriptions, ooh. Here beginneth the path to dread Hooktail Castle, weaklings retreateth. <laughs> Ye who seeketh to proceed, a power of two must hitteth both switches simultaneously. Addendum. If ye are a Petalbird Koopa, huzzah! Your hold ability maketh this chore a snap. So basically if you said no to Koops, Koops is actually one of the very few instances where a character gives you a yes or no question and if you keep saying no, usually they just keep blocking you in the dialogue until you say yes. But in Koops' scenario, if you say no to him, he'll actually stay behind and you have to go back for him. Which is kind of interesting, and that's also just another personality thing, because he's so timid and he backs down so easily, he doesn't have the backbone to keep bothering you, so he'll actually give up if you say no. Which I think is really cool, uh, just a little minor little detail. So this message, this message is basically for the people who, for whatever reason, decide to not take coops with them. But I gotta say something right now. This is going to be, this is like my one of my ultimate shames as a gamer, this moment right here. When I got to this part, I understood that I had to hit both switches at the same time, but I, for the life of me, could not figure it out at all. Nothing I did worked. I had no idea what I was supposed to do. I was on this, I'm not exaggerating when I say this, I was not on this for days, I was not on this for weeks, I was not on this for months. I was stuck on this part for literal years. I don't know the exact year in which I got a thousand year door, but I do know for a fact that I stopped playing this game at this point because I was stuck here forever. I could not activate these switches at the same time. And I stopped playing this game for literal years. It took forever. It took all the way into 2000 who knows when, when I finally got a hit of common sense knocked into me and I remembered that our brand new party member's ability that they just explained to us and told us not to forget allows him to be held in place and allows us to go over to this other switch and then we release it and hit them at the same time time. I cannot explain to you how I got stuck on this. It is the dumbest, one of the dumbest stinking moments I've ever had in any game I've ever played. Being stuck on this part for years, it was insane. And then after this, I beat the game in less than a week because I loved it so stinking much. But yes, this was the stopping point in my first experience with Thousand Year Door, and I remember just not liking the game because I was stuck here forever, but as soon as I did it, let me tell you, it all changed after that. Welcome to Hooktail's Castle.
Got ourselves a heal block for six coins now. Ooh, they're up in the price because we're up in the difficulty. 